Hi, um, my name is Madeline Amherst and I work with Air St. Gross. I've been invited here today to read If You Lived Here, The Houses of the World. So let's get started. Okay, so if you lived here in this dog trot log house, you would have to step outside to get from your bedroom to the kitchen. Your family's sleeping area would be in one section of the house, while the kitchen and the living area would be in the other. Between the two sections would be an open hall with a floor where the dog could sleep or a possum could scurry through. And if you lived here, so could you. So if you can see here in this little house, on one side would be your bedroom and, and where everyone would sleep, and over here would be your kitchen and the living area. And then as you can see through here, this is all open to the air. So this is where the dog would scurry through. And this is a, this, these houses were built in the United States. Here's another picture. And if you lived here on the snowy mountain, you could shelter sheep, goats, and cows in your family chalet. With as many as four floors, a chalet is much larger than the American dog trot log house. Your animals would live on the ground level while you and your brothers and sisters would sleep high above on the very top floor. Your skis, snowshoes, and ice skates would be placed under the lowest balcony by the entry door and your homemade cheese stored in the cellar. If you can see here, the chalet is a French word and it means a small castle. The low pitch roofs of the chalets are covered with snow during the winter months, which traps the fireplace heat inside. The wide eaves above the balconies keep melting snow off the walls and the balconies. So here's the snow and here's all the floors. And you can find this type of house in Switzerland, Austria, Germany. This is a very different type of house. So if you lived here, you would need to scramble up a ladder to get to the hidden rooftop opening to enter your house. Instead of logs, your house would be built of adobe clay and it would share walls with other homes to create a structure up to five stories high that from a distance would look just like a village. If any unwelcome visitors appeared, you could just pull up the ladder behind you so they couldn't, they couldn't enter. So as you see here, you can see all the little ladders that go up to the houses. And this house type is called a pueblo, which is Spanish for a small village. And these thick adobe walls um, are made of clay, which keep the houses cool in the summer and hot in the winter. So it's really good for places with extreme climates. This is a very big house. As you can see, it's all connected through the, the whole, both pages. So if you lived here, you could get up from your bed in the main house. You could have breakfast in the back house kitchen and then walk to the barn without ever having to leave, the, leave to go outside. These connecting rooms make it possible for you to take care of your animals without ever having to trudge through the deep snow and howling winds of winter. The, these doors, you see one, two, three, four, five, four door, five doors would prevent the cows, goats, chickens, and geese from coming in to visit you. These were, these were built in the Northeast part of the United States right after the Civil War. This is another really interesting house. If you lived here, your bedroom would be inside a mountain. The front of your house with its windows and doors would hide the fact that your home is actually a cave dwelling. A chimney from the kitchen would poke up from the hillside above, and if another room was needed, your family could just carve out one in the interiors of the soft rock. Then you would be among one of the 45 million troglodytes, or cave dwellers, living in the world today. And actually, many children growing up in villages with cave dwellings believe everyone lives in caves and are surprised to discover that most people live in houses with a roof and four walls. So how cool is that? I think that's really, really cool. This one is beautiful, living on the water. If you lived here, you could catch fish from your bedroom window. Tall and strong wooden stilts would hold up your house high above the rising tides of an inlet of the Pacific Ocean. At the high tide, you could hop on a boat to visit a friend, and a low tide, you could walk across the base of the stilts to gather crabs, or watch pelicans glide overhead in search of their own fish. 
these houses are really popular in South America and the countries of Chile. Now this one is just absolutely beautiful. If you lived here, you would step directly from your front door onto a boat to go to school. Your neighborhood would be on a man-made island, barely above sea level, with a network of canals filled with all types of boat traffic. And just so you'd have boats instead of cars, bicycles, or buses. The floors of the three upper stories of your house are made of wood and tile. But guess what? The floor of the bottom story is completely water. This, in the location, is the Grand Canal of Venice, Italy. The unique floating city of Venice was built in the shadow tidal lagoons of the Adriatic Sea, initially for protection from the barbarians who invaded over land and had no boats. It later became one of the wealthiest and most powerful cities in the world, and it is still so stunning. This kind of looks like a castle. If you lived here, you'd have to cross three drawbridges to get into your house called the Chateau. Once inside, you would have endless corridors with dozens of rooms to run through and seven towers to climb from, which you could see out for miles. In the surrounding pond called a moat, you could row along the side paddling ducks and swans and over frogs and turtles. A chateau looks like a castle, but it's more comfortable and like side. So it's really secure. This looks like the Colosseum, doesn't it? If you lived here, you would always have friends at home to play with because your huge round house would be home to dozens of families, which would be really nice right now. <laughs> Your, home, your family's own living and sleeping rooms would be on the upper levels while cooking and laundry would be shared with others on the ground level. The interior rooms face inward into courtyards and the, only the two top floors have exterior windows. So you can see that here. The two top floors have all the windows and inside here is the main courtyard where all the, all the gathering happens. This is another really pretty facade. If you lived here, you could run downstairs to the ground floor to get pretzels and fresh baked bread from your mom and dad's bakery. Your home would be separated from neighboring houses with walls that extend from the foundation up to the very steep roof from your bedrooms in the nearby forest and the bustle of streets and activity below. These are really popular in Germany and other countries in Northern Europe. Ah, oh, this is one of my favorites. In Greece. If you lived here, how would you find your home when so many of them look alike? The color of the door, the railing, flower pots on the stairs, or your father standing on the balcony would help you spot your house. These cube-shaped houses seem to sit on top of one another as if they mount up on a steep hill. Because streets are often used like outdoor rooms, you might have to dart across a tiny lane to go from your bedroom to the kitchen. Because this building style has persisted for longer than a thousand years, it's almost impossible to distinguish the old ones from the new. And a fascinating fact is that this village streets were arranged in a maze-like pattern to confuse pirates and other invaders. And isn't that so cool? This one is beautiful. It's just like artwork. If you lived here, your brightly decorated home would be easy to find. With a brush of your fingertips and lots of colors, you and your mother and sisters would have painted the outside walls of your house in bold, geometric patterns and shapes that look like flowers, leaves, and birds. Each house facade in your village is decorated by its family and each has its own recognizable expression, just like a person's face. So these are really popular in South Africa. And if during times of war or times of crisis, you could paint the outside of your house and it would have coded messages for people to read. And they're just so pretty. Could you imagine being able to paint the front of your house? 
And these are two very different mobile homes. So you see this one is a yurt and this one is a streamlined trailer. So if you lived here in the yurt, you can move with your family and bring your house called a yurt along with you. Easily taken down in an hour, a yurt is made of parts light enough for a family's horses or yaks to carry new to new grazing grounds, where they are then just reassembled. Although the outside felt walls surround one large room, a yurt can be subdivided into smaller living spaces. This kind of reminds me of an igloo. But if you lived here in the streamlined trailer, you could travel with your family from Alaska all the way to Florida and always be at home. Tucked inside this trailer are fold away beds, a small kitchen, a tiny bathroom, a sofa, chairs, and cabinets filled with food. At your doorstep, you could have a campfire at Denali National Park in Alaska or spot an alligator in the Everglades of Florida. Traveling in trailers can be really, really fun. This one is very cool, very modern, a modern houseboat. If you lived here, you could see the sunrise from your bedroom window, feel your house rotate on the water, and later see the sunset from the same window. Using two steering wheels, you can turn your floating house to get a very different view. When you want to get ashore, you just scoot on over a 20 foot long metal gangway. So a fascinating fact about this house is that it is an early example of a green architectural design. The house can face the sun for warmth or turn away from the sun to keep cool. Because it floats, valuable land area is not consumed. And the last very cool one. Everybody knows what this is, right? A really cool tree house. If you lived here in the cool of the trees, you and your friends could be high above the ground and away from your parents, brothers, and sisters. With a strong tree in your background, in, if, with a strong tree in your backyard, and with whatever scrap metals you can find, boards, old windows, and doors, used furniture, canvas, and a homemade ladder, you can build your treehouse to look whatever way you want. When you finish it and climb inside with your flashlight in a sleeping bag, you'll be among the squirrels and woodpeckers and feel right at home. People have been building tree houses for shelter and protection since prehistoric times. And tree houses range from those in New Guinea rainforests built as high as 100 feet above the ground to Italian versions from the 1600s that include marble benches and fountains. Today, whole families can live in a large tree house that have all the modern comforts of a typical home. I think that would be really, really cool. And that is it for all the end of this book. But at the end of this book, if you decide to get it, it shows you where all of these houses are located all around the world. So you can visit all the different ones once this COVID is over. So that is the end of the book. And I wanted to say thank you and hi, and please stay safe. I hope to see you guys soon. Um, I really miss you and have a really good rest of your day. Bye. Thank you so much, Madeline. That was so fascinating to see how people around the world live. Uh, we'll be back with the next installment of Architects Read next week. In the meantime, check out our website for other kids' activities at AIA dc.com. Thank you.